everybody and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. And today's Top Tip Tuesday is how to make your own textured stamps. So we touched on the use of textured stamps in some of the other Top Tip Tuesday videos and I just thought that I would share with you um, the way that I make my stamps and the way that they evolve into different things as you go along through your clay journey. Um, so I have come up with a way of interlinking your stamps. So um, I'm making these sort of square shaped uh, stamps with a cutout in the middle and I've decorated them all differently with different motifs um, and then I have made corresponding round stamps that fit in the middle. So when you're, you can then use a different um, surround and a different stamp um, and the way that they uh, come out on your clay is very interesting. So this section along the middle here, as you can see, she says, holding up a wobbly slab, um, has the square design with different um, centres. And in fact, I have many and numerous um, round stamps that I can use in the centre. So you can make your stamps completely individual. Whatever you happen to like as a design, or if you wanted to perhaps make something that looks Chinese or something that looks Moroccan or theme your work in some way, maybe an Indian theme or something like that, using the beautiful fretwork um, patterns that the Indian um, and Moroccan cultures have, then you can obviously completely use your own designs and, and you know, let yourself go with putting the texture onto your own um, stamps that you can then use for slab work. Now out of slabs obviously very very versatile you can make anything platters, boxes, mugs, anything. Anything that can be thrown on the wheel can more or less be hand built with slabs so it's a very good technique. You could also make some border stamps so just stamps that you would just use along the border of a piece. Um, so I have made quite a few of these rectangular shapes that you can just use on a border so they're very very versatile and as I say you can you can just sit and carve very happily um, the uh, actual stamps and, and lose yourself in the pattern so the way that I make these is simply by rolling a slab out to start with and as you can see on this um, board I have shapes that I have literally just cut out with a cookie cutter. Indeed, this one is still fluted. So I quite like the fluted edge because it gives you something else. And then there are simple circles. And all I have done is rolled out a small ball of clay, cut it in half and attached it. And you will see in the center of this um, attachment that I have made a hole because obviously that is quite a depth of clay and you don't want that exploding in the kiln. So I have literally just slipped and attached a ball onto the end, or half, actually half a ball, because it's uh, half of a ball of clay, and then put a pin tool right the way down through the center of that um, so that it doesn't explode in the kiln. And then you're left with, on the right side of your stamp, you're left with a blank canvas. So think of it as a blank canvas. And then you can use any type of textured tool. Um, and again, I'm pulling out some of the items that I use when I'm mono printing. So, you know, you don't have to be limited to using your textured tools just for one thing. This is a tile grout spreader. And I have used that on this one here, as you can see, by just pressing it into the clay to make this kind of sort of checkerboard um, motif and you know you can really let yourself go as to what you want to do I mean you could do geometric patterns so that one has simply had a wooden tool such as this I mean most potters have these sort of modeling tools 
and I've just used it to carve into that to make a pattern. So again, a repeating pattern, you could use this stamp around a rim um, with a repeating geometric pattern. So that's quite a good idea. You can also use the um, these little um, metal ended. I still don't know what they're for. Somebody may comment and tell me what they were actually made for in the first instance. I use these a lot. They are really, really useful for making these lovely um, uh, holes in your work. And of course, when you're using the stamp on the clay, so you are making the negative image here. So when this stamp has been bisque fired, so that it is, it, is, it is bisked and therefore can be used, you will then be pressing the positive image onto your clay. And that's always something that's quite interesting, that you're almost working backwards making these stamps, because obviously the piece that you're going to be pressing into will become embossed from this negative image. So um, like, for instance, these that have just got the ribs in, will leave ridges on the clay. This is the negative. When it's pressed out, it will leave you with the positive. So you're always working in positive and negative with clay. And if I show you what I mean by that, this particular stamp has been carved with a leaf motif. And you can see that the, the carving is actually into the clay. But if I use this on the clay, so if I just press this stamp, into this slab of clay and give it a good press down. When it's used in the positive, the, the, the um, veins on the leaf stand proud. So it's no longer carved into the clay. It is sitting proud of the clay surface. So I, th I hope you can see that. So when you're, when you're making your own stamps, you're always working in the negative um, so that when you press it out, onto your clay, it makes the positive image. Um, and Sarah Pike, if you have a look at her stuff on Instagram, she is probably the person who is very well known for using this type of stamping on her beautiful mugs. And she makes some amazing pieces. And she uses this sort of um, Indian inspired shape and I've taken that one step further by making some in-between pieces. So this is, for instance, the shape. And then I've made some that fill in the shape next to the next one, if that's making sense. So they are interlinking. So when you use them all together, you are making like a chain of different um images across the top there. So there's three different stamps used on the top of here. Um, one, two, three. So I've repeated the top stamp across and then alternated the stamps um, here and they interlink into one border. You could use it as a border, you could use it all over, whichever. Um, and it really is entirely up to you how you decorate them. So they make your own individual unique um, pieces and it, it kind of resembles your personality because whatever you put on the stamps comes out on your work and that's really nice. And I've also used the sort of the yin and yang um, symbol to make these sort of paisley again interlocking into a circle. Um, so you can use them individually, you can use them in the round, uh, I have various of them, so you can then interlink them with different ones. So, you know, you'd, you'd end up with a pair that were different. Um, for instance, those you see. And then, of course, when you use them on your work, you can decide which pair you want to put together and interlink them on your work. I'll just do that and show you what I mean. And they're very, very simple to use because obviously you're just pressing them into a clay slab. There we are. And then they come out looking like a circle, but are in fact two halves. So quite an interesting thing to do. And it's really lovely actually spending a couple of hours sitting down and making some stamps. So I have three uh, boards of stamps here that I'm in the process of doing. So these are the larger square ones, 
which again I've cut out just with a square cookie cutter such as this and I have cookie cutters that are double sided, straight sided, fluted sided so I'm sure you can pick these up very cheaply in the pound shop uh, or wherever you know your dollar stores in America um, and again I have the same with the round so I have round straight edge, round fluted pardon me um, and I've even made some round ones with the flute and then used the flute as the cutter so you could make a different uh, center to go into that interlocking uh, stamp so you're creating more patterns with less stamps really is what I'm probably getting at and then the square ones I've made using a square cookie cutter and then cut the center out with a round cookie cutter so in other words I'm using both parts of that so that center has come out of that square um, and then I put the little handles on the square ones because they're easier to use with these little nubby handles on um, and again I've just put the needle tool through the uh, top of there because that's quite a thickness of clay I don't want it exploding so these are still in their raw state for me to sit and, and put the patterns on but um, I am going to start selling my stamps on Etsy so if you wanted to buy a set do have a look at my Etsy store and um, for those of you who live abroad um, I am going to be able to post these internationally I get lots of questions about um, buying my work and unfortunately I have to say that at the moment we have free shipping to the UK um, but I just uh, don't think that some of my more delicate work uh, for instance beautiful wonky pots I know how much you love them I just don't think that a three-legged wonky pot such as this would make it in the post all the way to America. It would just make it price prohibitive because obviously this item is quite heavy um, and the packaging, I'm gonna to have to put lots of packaging around it, it's going to make quite a big box and therefore the, the amount of the postage to get it to somewhere like America or Canada is going to probably be as much if not more than the price of the item. So it's really prohibitive. So I'm sorry at the moment that uh, international postage is out but for things like the stamps that I can wrap into smaller jiffy bags um, I will put them up on Etsy and I will put an international postage um, amount on there so you can take a look at them if you'd like to so as usual have a look at the website www.thepotterycorner.co.uk and my Etsy shop um, the ribbon will go across with the address for my Etsy shop as always I'm very very I'm glad that you've tuned in and taken a look. Uh, I hope it's been useful. I hope it will give you some ideas of how to make your own stamps, have a go, because when you start making your pieces, it's nice to have your own individual unique stamps that nobody else has got and they cannot be commercially bought. And also if you're, as I say, using a topic or taking a, a topic you can then individualise your own work to reflect the topic that you want, like geometric, Moroccan, Indian, whatever. You can actually then individualise your own stamps on your own work to reflect what you want to actually say on your work. So, as ever, thank you for watching. Um, there is a now um, a, a library of Top Tip Tuesdays, quite a few videos. So, if you are a new person viewing, do have a look at the other uh, Pottery Corner videos on the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to my channel to be notified of when there is new content. New content comes out every week. And as always, I'd be very pleased to hear from you in the comments below. If there's something you want me to cover, if there's a subject that, uh, that I can cover and pass on my knowledge to you, please do say so. I'm very happy to have a look at it and feature it in a, a forthcoming video. So as usual, all my regular people, thank you again for watching. And if you're new to my channel, welcome along and enjoy the ride. Thanks very much. Bye for now.